You freshmen had better pop, too. Ain't even half tried, neither one of you. Ain't no hope for you guys, no how. I want to turn around from here, and I want to see two chins well tucked back. I want to see two powerful little chests lifted right up into the atmosphere. What a creep. What a fantastic creep. My, 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 what a creep. Mr. Heave up your chest and grind that dumb dome home. Put a ring in that scrawny neck, Mr. Ring in that scrawny neck. Sorry looking specimen, Amy Jock. You freshmen seem shocked by our friendly visit and disturbed by our continued presence here. Now, Mr. Simmons, do you have any grounds for such an attitude? No, sir. And yet we'd all be expelled if we were caught here. Isn't that right, you insidious beast? Yes, sir. Well, now, you weren't being logical, were you, Mr. Simmons? No, sir. Have you figured out yet who won the Civil War? The North, sir. How dare you come down to our Southland and say a thing like that, you lying Yankee carpetbagger. <laughs> now, which side emerged victorious in the war between the states, mister? The South. Oh, now you're being sarcastic. You're trying to make fun of the South in your sly Yankee way, saying the South won the war when any fool knows the North won. Oh, what a conniving character you are. What a sly, crafty, calculating devil you are. Let's lynch him, Harold. Come on, Doc. You're getting this poor boy all confused in his mind. I think we should lynch him, Harold. He's probably a communist, anyhow. Doc, he don't look like much of nothing to me. Now, remind me to lynch him sometime, Harold. He needs it. You insane brutes rest. We're gonna have a little surprise party tonight. A card game. It's been our superb good fortune that I've been able to interest a great wit and a fine gentleman in joining us. Mr. Roger B. Gatt. His sense of humor, his courtly good manners, his true southern charm make him stand out from the crowd wherever he goes. Mr. Mark Wales, you're going to win about $90 from him. I'm going to win $90? Mm hmm That's more or less what he has on him. Now, before he stumbles in here, let's get a couple of things straight. Mr. Mark Wales, you're a filthy rich freshman with money dribbling out of your ears. You have a Cadillac car and an allowance of $200 a month. I don't have a Cadillac, sir. And my allowance is... Two dollars a week. You'll have a Cadillac car and 200 berries a month. You're the bait, mister. Roy thinks he's going to win a lot of money off you. Now, Mr. Simmons, this is what you have to remember. You just love football. And your favorite position is the tackle position. The tackle position? Mm-hmm. And you have a great admiration for the town of Birmingham, Alabama. Roger is from Birmingham, Mr. Simmons. Excuse me, sir. Do you plan to cheat during this game? Just a little. Well, perhaps this is a stupid, old-fashioned idea on my part, but I always thought that, that cheating at cards was not exactly the noble sort of thing to do. Well, I'll tell you what, Mr. Mark Wales. The money we win, you can keep. That'll make it noble. I don't want it, sir. Neither do I. Well, then, then why are you doing this? Sir, if you don't mind, I'd... I'd rather not get involved in some grudge of yours against another upperclassman. What in the world is the matter with you, mister? Don't you even know a joke when you see one? Well, I'd rather not cheat no, a card... No, come on now. Jock's got nothing against Roger. Have you, Jock? I'd rather not cheat a card, <coughs> sir. All right, then you can just give him the money back in the morning. Now, Jock is just trying to have a little fun, aren't you, Jock? Okay, if you don't want to play, forget it. 
I'd, I'd hate to, to be a wet blanket. If it really is a joke. Mister, of course it is. What in the Sam Mill is the matter with you? Hey, when, uh, how does liquor get in the freshman's press, John? I put it there, Harold. I don't think I put liquor in my press, do you? It's very thoughtful of your mother to pack this, Mr. Simmons. Well, come on, nut. Two bottles of liquor in the barracks, Jock? Mr. Simmons, you're going to be the bartender. Sir, I hope you'll forgive me, but you see, sir, I don't approve of alcohol. I don't care whether you approve of it or not. You just keep Roger's glass filled, that's all. Sir, you wouldn't make me do anything against my basic convictions, would you, sir? Sir, did you know that alcohol is the opium of the Western world? Sir, if you took a piece of beefsteak and immersed it in a glass of liquor and let it stand overnight, do you know that that liquor would literally eat that beefsteak? Now, sir, can you imagine what that liquor will do to the delicate linings of the human stomach? Now, you listen to me, you ridiculous idiot. You keep Roger's glass filled. I'm going to take this broom here and cut you in half. You understand? Yes, sir. Hey, Jack. Listen, you, you're not planning on getting Roger really drunk, are you, Jack? Mr. Simmons is going to get him dead drunk, Harold. Boy, I, I just don't think I'd do that, Jack, because old Rodney fights when he gets drunk, Jack. I know he does, Harold. Yeah, fix these for me, will you, boy? Shh. All right, Jeff. We've been waiting for you on pins and needles, boy. All right. Come on, Clint, come to Laura when you sleep. Simmons here was in the dither for fear you weren't going to show up, boy. He's a great admirer of yours, you know. I want you to meet him, Roger. He is one of the most brilliant freshmen here this year. But well, here he is, Mr. Simmons. Roger B. Gatt. One of the greatest football players in all of Dixieland. How do you do, sir? Uh, my favorite position is the tackle position. Oh, now, that's quite a coincidence. Roger here happens to be a tackle. What is it you like about the tackle position? Well, I just admire it, sir. Well, that's funny. You know, most people, they like the backfield. And bats get all the glory. Sir, they do. They certainly do. I like the backfield, too. But my favorite position is the tackle position. Roger. The uh, sort of hero worships you. All right. You been around here long? Sure. Answer the question, Mr. Simmons. Have you been around here long? Since before taps. No, no, no. No, Roger doesn't mean that. He means have you been around the college long? Oh, I got here when it opened. I mean when it started. Roger. He got here when the term started. Uh, well, that's good. I'd have you around. You like it here? Yes, sir. Well, that's good, too. Great school there is. Mr. Guy's from Birmingham, Mr. Simmons. You remember Birmingham, don't you, Mr. Simmons? Don't you remember telling me how you want to settle down there when you finish school, go into the horse feed business? Yes, sir. What was that, was that uh, mule feed? Horse feed, sir. There's a lot of horses around there. A lot of mules, too. Shucks, they have everything. <coughs> everything. Everything in Birmingham. You know that? It's such a beautiful city. All those smelters and everything. Yeah. It's real pretty there. There's 
Is that him? Rich Freshman? Yeah, that's him, Raj. And he's itching for action. You got a Cadillac car? Yes, sir. A Cadillac. What color is it? Brown. <laughs> sort of a creamy brown. Brown? Well, I wouldn't get caught dead in no brown car. You know, I'll get red. Hey, John. Mm -hmm. You know my grandmammy? Mm hmm? Mm -hmm. You know? You know, she won't let me out no automobile? Why you like that, Jock? You know, you and she says? He says, I'm going to you had no automobile. She <laughs> said, you're calling me on the automobile. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> 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 oh, Roger, you kill me, boy. <laughs> Man, what a witticism. <laughs> <laughs> what are you laughing at? Nothing, sir. Oh, see you don't. You're a freshman around here, and see you remember that. Hey, well, I'll be dog. Look, look at that liquor sitting on that table. I, how'd you do that, Jock? Nothing's too good for my friend Roger. <laughs> Mr. Simmons, pour Mr. Gad a drink. Drink up, Roger. Okay, Roger, boy. How many cards you need? Mm. Three. Mm, you got it. Dog, I'm... I don't get very many chips, sir. Okay, now, Roger, look, uh, you're, you're seeing Mark Whale's raise, and you're raising six bucks yourself, right? Right? Yeah. Okay. I'm like ten. I beat three fours. I do. I got a full house. And my shake is bringing me luck. It's about time I want a pop. Well, what do you got this time? Four aces? No, sir. Four kings. <laughs> Give Mr. Gad a drink. Sir, it's practically a poison. How dare you say a thing like that to my friend Roger? <laughs> it's good for you. Best thing in the world for you. I'm warning you, Mr. Simmons, either you start doing your job as a bartender, you're gonna feel that broom. Yes, sir. You see, Roger? Mr. Simmons here is an odd character. He's what the coconut doctors call a schizophrenic. That means... That means that half of them likes horse feed and football. The other part's a teetotal and parson who raves and rants against demon rum. Don't take that back. <laughs> Sorry, Roger. Uh, now look here, John. Now, I, I like you and all that. Uh, my grandmammy told me don't ever make no joke about religion. Now you take it back. Well, I withdraw that statement, Roger. I'm awfully sorry, boy. All right. You shake on that, Roger. See, Roger? Roger, it's all that schizophrenic's fault. And you know what a schizophrenic is, don't you, Roger? All right, now, look here, mister. Well, this is the United States, Jordan, and you can take all that Europe stuff back where it came from. Oh, yeah, you take that schizophrenic stuff back to Sweden, Mr. Simmons. All right, mister. I'll teach you a lesson. Now, I say nothing against you because you're a Yankee. 
And uh, there are plenty of Yankees as good Americans as anybody else. But you look like a Yankee communist, mister. Get over the press, you northern communistic spy. I told you it was a communist, how? Actually, I suspected it all the time. You hardly touched him, Roger. Now that's enough. Now that's enough, Jock. Boy, that's just a plenty. He's going to kill him. An idiot like that is better off dead anyhow, Howard. Pour it on him, Roger. George is next door, Jock. He's right on the other side of that wall, and he's going to report us. His daddy's got the duty tonight, Jock, Major Avery. And George is going to run right down there and tell his daddy on all of us. Will he, Hal? Will he? Go on, boy. Lay it on him, Roger. Lay it on him, boy. Come on, Roger. <laughs> Just a minute. Mr. Paris, sir. He's in the room next to mine, beating a freshman to a pulp. Are you sure it's to Paris? Yes, sir. Come on. They were here before. Where is de Paris's room? Yes, sir. Have you been out of your room tonight? Have I been where, sir? Oh, never mind. I'm, I'm sorry. Go on back to sleep. That's all, Mr. Selby. Yes, sir. Relax, Georgie. Obviously, he was asleep. He wasn't asleep, Dad. I'm telling you, he wasn't asleep. Georgie, take a bicarbonate of soda and go on back to bed. gonna have to go cry on your grandmammy's bony old shoulder. You say 
I never chew my spinach twice, you overgrown moron. You heard me the first time. What's the matter, boy? What's the matter, Roger? What's the matter, Roger? What's the matter, boy? What is it, Roger? Get him, Roger! Get him, boy! Clobber, boy! Clobber, Roger! Come on, Roger. Get him, Roger. Get him, boy. Go ahead, Roger. Get him, boy. Get him. Get him. Get him. Get him. Clobber, Roger. Go ahead, boy. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sir, Mr. Prepare, sir, would any of you gentlemen care for some milk? There was a case like that about five years ago. Some senior smuggled a bottle into his barracks, nipped on it all night. He went out for breath of air, he fell down the stairs, stumbled out on the quadrangle and passed out. They found their breakfast formation the exact same way. Ah, uh, he wasn't dead. Drunk and beat up, that's all. Sure was beat up. I saw so much blood. Who do you think could have beat him up that way, anyhow? I had somebody say he just fell down the stairs. Well, nobody beat him up, he just fell down the stairs. on your mind? Well, sir, it's about Cadet Avery being found this morning on the quadrangle. The cadet colonel said that any cadet with information about that should report to you before drill. Do you know something about it? Yes, sir, I do. It's a, it's a little difficult to say, but uh, I feel kind of responsible for what's happened to Cadet Avery. In what way do you feel responsible? Well, sir, last year I was a cadet officer, and Cadet Avery was in my platoon. I was very tough on Cadet Avery and all the men in my platoon. Excuse me. Weren't you the cadet who got the punishment order last May, just toward the end of the term? Yes, yes, sir. Uh, just to refresh my memory, what was that punishment order for? Major Avery reported me for harshness toward underclassmen, sir. And rightly so. I see. Well, learning that authority and responsibility go together is one of the hardest things in life, Cadet de Paris. However, I take it you have some special reason for telling me this. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, I do. You see, sir, my, my harshness toward Cadet Avery seems to have given him an, an obsession about me. It seems. Yes? Well, sir, I don't know much about these mental things, but all year, Cadet Avery has been hinting that there's some kind of a plot against him, that I'm the ringleader. He, he thinks I'm trying to persecute him, sir. Sit down, Cadet de Paris. Thank you, sir. That's very interesting. Does he think anyone else has been persecuting him, or, or just you? Well, it's mainly me, sir. He suspects my roommate and the two freshmen in the room next door. 
In other words, you feel that because of the discipline of the school, and in particular because of your mistaken harshness, Cadet Avery's had a nervous breakdown. Well, no, sir. I, I think he's had more than a nervous breakdown. I think he's had a mental breakdown. Why else would a cadet with a perfect record get drunk and wreck his whole career? What makes you think he was drunk? I've uh, been found like that on the quadrangle, passed out, liquor bottles all around him. I assumed he must be drunk. Not necessarily. The boy's been injured. Could have a mild concussion, not be drunk at all. As for the liquor bottles, those could have just been put there. I think planted is the term. Isn't that possible? Well, yes, sir. I suppose that's remotely possible. I think more than remotely possible. In fact, that's Cadet Avery's story. But, sir, I was there on the quadrangle this morning. He reeked of alcohol. Oh, there's no doubt that whiskey was spilled or poured all over his clothes. The question is whether or not any of the whiskey went into his stomach. However, we'll know the answer soon. What do you mean, sir? I'm having the state police analyze a sample of Cadet Avery's blood. His blood, sir? Yeah. You see, Cadet de Paris... Now, if... Laboratory analysis shows there's no alcohol in the man's blood. Well, then, even though he's reeking of whiskey and his clothes are covered with it, and there's liquor bottles all around and his days from a bad beat, you can be sure of one thing. He's sober. Yes, sir. If this test seems to show that Cadet Avery was sober, then that would mean some college cadet deliberately tried to make him look guilty. I can't believe a college cadet would do an unscrupulous thing like that, sir. Well, although I appreciate your loyalty to the school, I'm not as much of an idealist as you, Cadet de Paris. I'm afraid that out of 2,000 men, one or two were apt to turn out to be slightly rotten. Yes? Excuse me, the police report is here, sir. Oh, fine, bring it in. Now that's all, Cadet de Paris. Uh, once again, we'll call you. Yes, sir. And thank you very much, Cadet de Paris. I appreciate your volunteering this information more than you realize. Hello, Cliff. Hello, George. Here it is, sir. Thank you. That's all. Jocko, I'm telling you, boy, you're not going to get away with it. It won't work. Harold, they said the same exact thing to Robert Fulton. It won't work. That steamboat won't go. That's what those doodlebugs said to Fulton. Jock, now we're going to have to stop joking, boy, because this one ain't funny. Don't you think I'm funny anymore, Harold? You used to think I was a real card. Sir, that's the way I got into all this, thinking you was a real card. What George Avery ever do to you anyway, Jock? Do to me. He never did anything to me, Harold. Well, why would you do all that to him for then? Why did I do it? I didn't do it, Harold. You did it. Don't you remember telling me how you hate Georgie? I told you I hate Georgie? Chuck, I don't hate Georgie. When did I ever tell you that? Uh, Harold, what a feeble memory you have. You're a left-handed pitcher. That's what you are, Harold. Now, listen, Jock. Man, I don't know what went on in that room last night. It is dark. All I know is that you and Roger beat up on Georgie. It was you and Roger beat him up, not me. Jock, what reason did I have to beat up Georgie? You got a special order two weeks ago because... because Georgie reported you late from general leave. Jock, I never even remembered that. Yeah, well... Whether you remember it or not, it's on the record. There's nothing on the record Georgie ever did to me. I have no motive, Harold, but you do. Besides, even if we do get caught, you'd still be expelled. I'd be expelled? Sure. You played cards after taps, you drank whiskey in barracks. He stood by while a man was beaten unconscious. 
You're in this up to your neck, boy. And if we do get caught, they're gonna think you're the ringleader, not me. Said I used to think you as a card, Jock. Son, you are a card, all right. You're the ace of spades, buddy. That's what you are. Don't worry, Harold. Come on. Let's go to college and get some knowledge. <laughs> I'm just being friendly, John. Now look, if you don't stop hanging around me, I'm going to stuff your nauseating carcass into one of those artillery pieces, pull the lanyard, and blow you out to sea. <laughs> John, but you said we have a good for colorful picturesque piece. Get on my nerves. It's awful about Georgie, isn't it, Jack? I mean, that was quite a mysterious occurrence. Why don't we put our noggins together sometime and have a little talk about this mystery? I don't talk to talk <laughs> himself and the college. Cadet Avery is on this date expelled in dishonor by order of General M.W. Cheney. Battalions, Company commanders take charge and move out to mass. Two leaders, take charge of your platoons, move out to mass. You're not afraid of the pirates, huh? Mm. Oh, no. Of course not. Certainly not. Mm -mm. Oh, no. Absolutely not. Mm -mm 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 Why don't you go take a bath? Bringing that up again, huh? Can't stick to the subject, can you, Mr. Mark Williams? Your conscience is bothering you. That's what's wrong with you. You have a guilty conscience. Innocent man expelled. And you're sitting there doing nothing. Well, what are you doing, Simmons? Well, I never said I was not afraid of the Paris. Why don't you go take a bath? I won't take a bath. I don't like those group showers. You may not understand this, Mr. Mark Valiez, but there are some people who are modest. What a roommate. Uh, you say that. I should say that. What a roommate. <laughs> a hypocrite. Listen, Simmons, my parents saved for years so I could go to this school. If I was expelled from here, they'd never understand it. And the only way I can save George Avery is to get myself expelled. And I can't do that to my parents. And that's all there is to it. Oh, so now you're pretending you like the school, hmm? But I've heard you say differently, Mr. Mark Williams. Hmm. He has a guilty conscience. He has a guilty conscience. He is a coward, a coward, a coward. Will you please shut up? Don't tell me to shut up. You're a freshman. You can't tell me to shut up. The hypocrites are taking over everything. 
The hypocrites are taking over everything. The entire whole world, the entire whole world. Justin Simmons, I've had just about enough out of you. Now get out of here and take a shower. It's been six weeks, Simmons. You need it. Please, take a shower. All right, I will. When? Sometime. Take one when you get the nerve to report that beast. Simmons, why don't you report him? Seriously, what have you got to lose? You don't belong in this school. Flunking all your classes anyway, what have you got to lose if you're expelled? I'm not flunking all my classes. I just haven't gotten used to this warm climate yet. And furthermore, I haven't even begun to study. And if you would shut your mouth, I could study. The hypocrites are taking over everything. The hypocrites are taking over everything. Touch it, bud. The hypocrites are taking over everything. All right, stop it. I got it. There you cut that out, my friend. Simmons, is that any way to talk to your roommate? What's the matter? Can't we have anything around here but strife? You know, if the cadet colonel heard you say such a thing to your roommate, he'd probably crouch down and lay an egg. Rest. Mr. Simmons? Yes, sir. How would you like to have a date in town with a girl tonight? No, thank you, sir. What's the matter? Don't you like women? <laughs> I simply don't understand you, Mr. Simmons. What have you got against women? I don't have anything against women, sir. But I have to think of my mother. <laughs> well, what, what I've heard about your mom, you may have a point there, Mr. Simmons. Let's come to grips with this thing. What do you like? Blonde? Brunette? Redhead? You like them skinny? Or do you like them with meat shaking on their bones? Well, I think, sir... Well, frankly... I think that spiritual qualities are more important than weight. Oh, you like them skinny, so you can sling them over your shoulder and be a caveman, huh? She's little and skinny. She's cute as a bug. I really don't like skinny people, sir. Well, she's not really skinny all over, Mr. Simmons. As a matter of fact, if you catch her at the right angle, you think she was a plate of jello? Well, I'd rather not meet her, sir, if you don't mind. You've been a mad, inhibited beast long enough, Mr. Simmons. Well, sir, as much as I appreciate your offering me this introduction, frankly, I can't meet her. Why not? There's such a thing as morals, sir. There's also such a thing as 50 million years of evolution, Mr. Simmons. I'll tell the truth, Mr. Simmons. Don't you ever have any wicked thoughts? Very seldom, sir. Oh, you know you have wicked thoughts all the time, Mr. Simmons. You see, I'm wise to you, Mr. Simmons. You're not really an innocent little lamb at all. Sure. Underneath, you're a snarling wolf. Yes. Sure. So wait until you meet Rosebud. The wolf in you will come to the surface. Sir, Mr. I Simmons. must speak. I don't speak, you idiot. We're not deaf. Sir, I know that there must be inside of you, deep inside of you, a Christian feeling. You're not some of Mohammedan. Scoff if you will, but I must speak all the same. May I rise, sir? You may rise, Mr. Simmons. But you can't convert me. I'm a fire-eating Calithumpian, and I intend to resist your blandishments. Sir. Sir, I don't think you know why I've come here to the school. I haven't come here because of its fame as a military college. No, if I come here simply to study engineering like Mr. Marquardt. Sir, I think when you understand 
why I've come here to this school. You'll understand why I cannot possibly meet this young lady that you would like me to meet. Simmons, he's gonna kill you if you don't shut up. Shut up, Mark Wales! Mr. DeParis wants to hear this. You see, sir, I can't meet this young lady that you would like me to meet because it's my eventual ambition to become a chaplain, sir. Those are the facts, sir. You see, sir, my cousin Horace was killed in the last war. Most regrettable death, quite a tragedy. Horace was caught in the full flower of his youth. Ever since then, sir, I've decided that my own pathway is clearly marked out for me. I shall become a chaplain. How did Horace get it, Mr. Simmons? Shrapnel, sir. Then a machine gun mowed him down. And a bomb fell on him. He got the Congressional Medal of Honor and the Croix de Guerre. Now, you're a liar, Mr. Simmons. You know you have no cousin Horace who was killed in the war. You're trying to con me? Tonight, Mr. Simmons, you are gonna meet Miss Rosebud. Oh, sir. I can see, sir, I haven't gotten through to you. Sir, don't you realize your errors? Why not let the spirit of brotherhood that's buried deep inside of you emerge into the glorious air of love and truth? Go take a shower. So you aren't really going to make me meet this girl, I hear so. Mr. Simmons. But, sir, I get very tongue-tied around girls. Go ahead, take a shower. I won't. I promised my mother on the deathbed I wouldn't go out with any girls. Now, that's a deathbed promise, and I cannot break a deathbed promise. Your mother isn't dead, Mr. Simmons. But she would die if she knew I went out with a girl like this. So it's actually a deathbed promise in a deeper sense. Get out of here. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Are you trying to make him go and report us all? If you make me go out with this girl, I'm going to throw myself off the roof. Go take a shower. Do you think demoralizing like this will make him keep his mouth shut? If it won't, then nothing will. Thank you, sir. I'm much more likely to report you than Simmons is. Well, you know better than to do that, Mr. Mark Wales. Besides, you're not the informer type. Would reporting you really be informing, sir? You may not believe this. But I'm sorry for what happened. It's, it's true. It's true I had it in for Georgie. But I'm, I'm sorry for him now. I'm even sorrier for Major Avery. I saw that man's face when he found his, his son on the quadrangle this morning. You really are a con man, sir. If I didn't know you, I'd think you were telling the truth. Hi, Roger. Hey, Jock, I want to talk to you. Right there, Roger. What happened? Uh, Simmons is okay, but Mark Wales. Well, Randy's already questioned those guys, Jock. They ain't said anything. Yeah, but Major Avery's gonna put a lot more pressure on him than that. Boy, just don't stand there sipping water. Let's do something. I'm telling you, Jock, those freshmen talking, we're gone guardsmen. Why don't you talk to him now? You talk to Mark Wales. Let him know how you feel. Well, all right. I'll go see what I can do. Hey, Roger. What are you doing up there, boy? I'll be dog if I'm losing my killer instinct. Come on up here. At ease, mister. Rest. Ooh, them steps are going to be the death of me. Whew. Come on, Mr. Mark Wells. I got to have a little talk with you.
Listen. If you say anything about what happened last night, you won't just be throwing Jock out. You'll be throwing out me, Raj, and your own roommate. This is Raj of my fourth year here, mister. I know you've just been here a few months. But think about what it means to me and Raj. You know as well as I do, we didn't know what Jock was doing. Do you honestly think that I knew what Jock was up to? No, sir. I know you didn't. How can you report us then? Attention to orders. Attention to orders. Cadet Smart Wells R and Simmons MM report for the guard room immediately. I say again, Cadet Smart Wells R and Simmons MM report for the guard room immediately. That's all. Cadet Simmons. Officially, this investigation is closed. But my son says he went into your room last night. It's hard for me to believe he'd tell me a deliberate lie. I want to appeal to you and to your roommate for the truth. Did he or did he not go into your room? Well, sir, I was asleep, sir. I didn't hear him come into the room. If he did... You did, Mark Wales? Yes, sir. You heard nothing. My son didn't go into your room. No, sir. Let me put something to you hypothetically, Cadet Mark Wales. Let's suppose that an upperclassman abused his authority to force a freshman to break regulations. Suppose his freshman knew he would be expelled if he told the truth. It'd be asking a lot to ask that freshman to tell the truth, wouldn't it? Well, uh, yes, sir, it would. And yet, in all fairness, this freshman didn't have to obey illegal orders, did he? No, sir. I don't know what this school means to you, but I do know what it means to my son. You look like a decent boy, and I'm going to make an appeal to you. If you've lied, tell the truth. Sure. I'll pitch you out of this school so fast it'll make your head swim. But I'll respect you as a man. Well, sir, I... I would like very much to have your respect, sir. But the truth is, I didn't obey any illegal orders, sir. All right. That's all. I don't guess you can be blamed. Standing there doing nothing. Have to do it with yourself, Dick Howard, huh? Howard, you're born a lecturer. Fairly well, fairly well, fairly well, my fair is fame. Hey, Mark Wells, don't you stand up when you enter an upperclassman's room. Stand up hard, mister, and pull your neck back. Now, you listen to me, Jocko. I just lied for you and saved your dirty skin. But if you ever put me through anything like that again, so help me, I'll get you if it's the last thing I ever do. So help me, I'll break your back. Do you hear me, Jocko? Yes, I hear you. Well, don't you forget it. Sometimes you just upset me so much. Oh, 
You still following me around? Only taking a shower. Uh, what's the cockroach doing Wait, taking a shower? Jocko, there's something I want to discuss with you. Hello, cockroach. If you don't stop hanging around me, I'm going to get some DDT and pour it all over. Oh, Jocko, get it. You! There you go. There you go. All right. Now, I know exactly how you beat Georgie unconscious. You got him drunk by sticking that tube down his throat and pouring whiskey in him. And if you try and throw me out of this room, I'll go right to Colonel Ramey with the whole story. Now, sit down. Sit. All I ask of you, Jocko, is that you be reasonable. How do you know I did anything to Georgie? I oversaw you. I watched the whole thing from the gallery. You oversaw me. You really are a cockroach, aren't you? No, I'm not a cockroach. I'm a creative writer. Well, go ahead and laugh. Everyone does. But I have the fire of genius in me. I'm sure of it, practically certain. I'm not laughing, Perrin. The artist isn't appreciated in this country. Now, here, I'm sent by my family to a military school for discipline. While in Europe, with my talent, well, I'd already be famous. Now, you may not believe this, but most of the cadets around here regard me as a creep. Well, you know how they are, Perrin. All they think about is football and things like that. What do you have in these notebooks? It's a novel. Semi-biography. No kidding. Yeah. And you're the hero of it, Jock. What's the point of that, Perrin? Well, I'm sort of your Boswell, Jock. Every great hero has his biographer. Of course, you realize I've only used you as my inspiration. But it's all here. I mean, the facts on me. Would you like me to read you just a brief little excerpt? I'd love to hear some of it. Would you? Oh, I was hoping you'd say that. I hope you like it. I, 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 do, I, do, I do hope you like my style. I'll just start here with chapter 92. <clears throat> the trembling rats, they sweating in their beds as the footsteps of the Major pounded in utter silence on the gallery. The hulking beast crouched behind the uniforms like an unborn fetus. This is the part where Gad is hidden in the press and the freshmen pretend to be asleep. <laughs> and the Major comes up to inspect. Of course, you realize I changed the names of the characters. I call you Night Boy. Call me what? Night Boy. That's the title of the book, too. Night Boy. Isn't that poetic? Now, just let me read you part of this. I think I get the general idea. Does this bore you? Oh, no. Do you like my style? I've worked terribly hard on my style. It's original, don't you think? There's no doubt about it, Perrin. You have talent. Thank you. I appreciate that. Of course, nobody would ever believe the story. But the style is magnificent. Well, I rather like the story. 
Well, don't, don't worry. I'll disguise it before I ever show it to anybody. This is strictly between you and me, Jack. All I want to have is your confidence and your friendship. Well, you have that, Perrin. I had no idea you were so talented. Well, I'll be around, Jock. Sure. You come around and read me the next chapter. Of course, you realize I'm pretty busy, though. Well, don't worry. I won't bother you. But I'll be around. Fine. I'll see you later. I thought you couldn't stand that guy. Man, I never knew you liked him. I don't. What's he doing in here, anyhow? reading me a book. Cockroach writes. Come on, Simmons. I'm hurrying as best as I can. <sighs> Look, Simmons, you want to go with me to a movie? You want to go with Jock or to meet Rosebud? I'm hurrying the fastest that I can. Listen, Simmons, if you're not ready about All right, minutes... that's enough out of you, Mr. Mark Willie. Just don't go giving me orders, see? You're a freshman. I don't... Mr. Simmons, don't you and I have a date tonight? Look, Jocko. Don't you think this joke's gone far enough? Mr. Simmons, you'll be at the Hare of the Hound Club in an hour. And that's an order. I won't go. This is a free country. Go on, get dressed. I'll go with you. You are a hypocrite. You really are. You want me to have to go out with this girl. Listen, Simmons, I'm trying to help you. Now go on, get ready. Oh, I don't want to meet any girl. Well, you're bigger than she is, Simmons. You can always punch her in the nose. Italian food gives me a case of indigestion. I think I'll have me a lamb chop. Oh. That's, that's an excellent choice, sugar butter. A noted for that juicy lamb chop sandwich. Don't call me sugar butter. I ain't no bee. Oh, I'm sorry, Angel Turkey. Would you greatly mind calling me by my given Christian name? How do you know? I don't know your I don't know your name. What is your name, hon? <laughs> my name is Peony. Peony. Yeah, but I, I thought you I thought you said you weren't a flower. Peony it's... ain't no flower. Oh no? It's a musical instrument, like a guitar. Only little. Oh, I don't know what you want to take me here for when we can dine and dance down at the hotel. The 
This place hasn't got no culture at all. Look at all that old sawdust on the floor. Now, honey, sawdust on the floor is considered very shishi. It's considered what? Considered shishi. You know, fashionable. The thing. Don't talk that Italian to me. I'm an American. Ready to order? Mm -hmm. I'll order and then, then I'll go upstairs and get your date. What date? Don't you remember that very cultured gentleman I told you about? The boy I want you to meet? Oh, yeah. But I thought you was my date this evening. Well, what is date, honey? Oh, isn't that a little crowd? Not really. Joe. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll have, uh, we'll have two antipastos. And then we'll have, we'll have a bottle of red wine. And I'll have veal scallopini. And a nice, juicy lamb chop for the young lady. Excuse me, Lotus Petal. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> They have their shirts off. Oh, relax, Simmons. My two favorite freshmen. And my favorite freshman of them all. She's downstairs. She's dying to meet you. Is there really a girl downstairs? Yes, there is. At the moment, she's eating a lamb chop. When she sees a lamb chop, those little white teeth of her just snap automatically. I guess it's the beast of her. Simmons, you're looking a little bloated today. Excuse me, but what are you trying to accomplish by having him meet this girl? Be quiet, Mr. Mark Wales. Mr. Simmons, I imagine that you, like most of us, have dreamt in your lonely hours of meeting a girl who isn't the higgling, picky type. You just treat her like Duchess Poopadoop. Every once in a while, toss her a lamb chop. And before you can say whoops, you'll be known around the campus as Casanova Simmons. Now, let's get spick and span for Rosebud. Wait a minute, Jocko. What's the point of this? Man has to have a hobby, Mr. Mark Wales. Ferris, you're under arrest. Well, what do you mean, I'm under arrest? I mean, just what I said. Get your hat, I'm taking you back to the barracks. By whose order am I under arrest? Order Major Avery. Come on. Let's go. Come on, Sam. We better see what's going on. Cadet to Paris, sir. Thank you, that's all. Cadet to Paris. Do you always go on general leave when you're on guard duty? When I'm what, sir? I said, do you always go on general leave when you're on guard duty? I'm not on guard duty, sir. Here's your name right on the guard list. I was relieved of guard duty last week by Colonel Ramey, sir. You were? Yes, sir. Oh. Yes. I uh, see a note about it there. It was very careless of me to Paris. Well, sir, anyone can make a mistake. Of course. Certainly. And I'm sorry, really sorry. Look, Cadet to Paris. I got you here on a ruse, really. Actually, I have no business questioning you at all. But I did want to ask you one thing. Yes, sir? It's about my son, George. 
Yes, sir. As ridiculous as it is, he... he insists that you're responsible for his difficulties. I didn't bother to ask you about it before because it's... well, it's so absurd. It... Well, sir, I don't see how he maintains I'm responsible for his difficulties. His story is ridiculous. He claims that he didn't have anything to drink that night and that you and some other cadet he couldn't recognize beat him up, dressed him and put him on the quadrangle. Does he, sir? Yes, he does. And as ridiculous as it is, I... I thought I'd ask you about it anyhow. Did you do that, cadet, to Paris? No, sir. It's a feeble tale. Besides, after all, the boy was dead drunk. You can't get around that. The state police themselves say so. And that makes his charge against you, obviously, so much nonsense. Well, sir, as sympathetic as I am to your son, I must admit I'm certainly glad that test was made. It makes hash out of his statement that he wasn't drinking. Obviously, he was drinking. And if he's lying about that, he must be lying about everything else. There's no way a man can get drunk and not drink. Is there, Cadet to Paris? No, sir. You better get on back to your date. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, by the way, Cadet to Paris. Yes, sir. At ease. Do you happen to know what a gag reflex is? A what, sir? A gag reflex. You mean like motion sickness, sir? Now, oh, Cadet to Paris. Don't tell me you, you don't know what a gag reflex is. If you put your finger down your throat, you gag. That's right, sir. Suppose you put, put any foreign object on your throat. Say a rubber tube. You do the same thing. It's the gag reflex. It happens even when you're unconscious. It does, sir? Yes, yes, it does. That's how they put tubes down people's throats when they have to pump out their stomachs if they've swallowed poison or sleeping pills. By the same token, you could put something into the stomach as well as take it out if you had some sort of apparatus to do it with. Come here. Well, Cadet to Paris. Well, sir. This is how you did it. Did what, sir? Poured a pint of whiskey into that boy. I didn't have any proof before, but I've got proof now. Sir, I swear to you, I don't know what on earth you're talking about. You know very well what I'm talking you about. You seem to be saying I put that tube down your son's throat and poured whiskey in him. But I can't believe you'd make an unfounded, crazy charge as that, sir. What would you say if I told you that after I found this, I took it to the state police lab, and that the technician there discovered whiskey in this tube? How did that whiskey get in there, Cadet de Paris? It didn't, sir. That lab technician didn't find anything. You're bluffing, sir. Am I? Then let me ask you why you're so sure. How do you know there's no whiskey in there? Well, sir, it's got to be one of two things. Either this is all your imagination, in which case there'd be no whiskey in that tube, or you're right, I did it all, just as you say. Now, sir, if I was such a Machiavellian, crafty, conniving character as all that, would I be so stupid as to leave whiskey in that tube for you to come along and find it? I don't think so, sir. It stands to reason that thing would be washed with loving care. Of course, sir, you could have put whiskey there for the police to find. I wouldn't think of such a thing. Well, it's too late to do it now, sir. All right. But you're not getting away with this. Getting away with what, sir? You know perfectly well. Cut out the acting to Paris. I'm not acting, sir. You're the one that's acting. 
All this stuff about my name being on the guard list, all this poop about your son's story being ridiculous. Who are you kidding, Major? You young scoundrel, don't you provoke me. I'm warning you. You want to know what happened, sir? I'll tell you what happened. You sure will. You'll tell me right now, and then you'll go with me and tell Colonel Ramey. Well, this is what happened, sir. Your son got blind drunk, fell down a flight of stairs, and passed out on the quadrangle. The sad fact is he's had a nervous breakdown. Well, if you want my advice, sir, then I suggest you put your son in the sanitarium. He's a very sick boy, sir. And it would be best for him to, to be separated for a while from you and Mrs. Avery. You know, they say these mental breakdowns often come from a lack of harmony in the home. <laughs> no disrespect intended toward you and Mrs. Avery, sir. I'm sure both of you have tried very hard to be good parents to Georgie. You liar! Tell the truth! Tell me the truth, you liar! For you, sir, I'm not a vindictive person. You've just done me a terrible injustice. I think we just lost ourselves a major. Inspection, sir. Read the armory for what? To talk about reporting Mr. De Paris, sir. Reporting to Paris? How can we report to Paris? Well, your roommate's cadet colonel, sir. We could just go to him and tell him the whole story. Lord, he'd, he'd report us all. We'd, we'd every one of us be expelled. That's why I thought we ought to meet and talk it over. <laughs> Look, I, I ain't about to to go to the armory, mister, with you. Well, in that case, we'll just have to meet without you. But remember, sir, if any one of us talks, that's enough. Uh, Jocko, he's gonna kill us all. You won't know anything about it, sir. Will you ask Mr. Coble to come along with you? What's that freshman doing in our room, Roger? Oh, nothing, Laurie. You just visiting. Jocko hears about this, Mr. Marquail. He's going to kill you. This meeting wasn't my idea, sir. I never told him we should give ourselves up. I ain't about to give myself up. Well, that's right. Ain't nobody giving himself up. Who well, in the Sam Hill you think you are anyway, Robert, going around acting like a darn hero? I'm not trying to act like a hero, sir. Those are exactly my own sentiments, sir. He is definitely trying to act heroic. Come on, now, let's stop acting like a dumb job. But, sir, stop. Shut up. What are you trying to do, Robert? Clear your own conscience at our expense? Why should we take the blame for another guy's meanness? We didn't do it. Jock did it. That's right, Jock did it. I don't even know what is going on. None of us here had no idea he's planning on doing all that to Georgia. 
let alone the Major. Jock doesn't have anything against the Major any more he does against Georgie. It was obvious last night who he's really against. Who's he against, Father? Everybody, sir. May well be. There's nothing we can do about it. Now, is there, mister? Is there one blessed thing that we can do about it? Listen, sir. Ever since I come to this school, people have been calling me mister and asking me stupid questions. Now, what is this place, anyhow? What's wrong with us? We're letting Jocko de Paris use us just as he pleases, and even now we're going to let him get away with it. Are we so used to obeying orders we lost our guts? Whatever we decide here, I know one thing. I'm leaving this school. I feel like a misfit. I don't belong here. It's wrong to blame the school, Robert. It ain't the school's fault about Jocko. Shoot, that boy had been the way he is no matter where he'd gone. Now, Harold, you know he flourished here like a toadstool in a swamp. School ain't no swamp. This is a good college, and you may not belong here, but this is a good college. You know yourself, the Major broke Jock of his rank just last year. Broke his rank? A sadistic bully, and they break his rank. Now, you tell me why they didn't get really tough with him. Well, I don't know. I just don't think you're right about the school, Robert. I'd be very glad, sir, if you could prove me wrong. Well, it's easy for you to talk, because you're planning on leaving anyhow. How about the rest of us? Ain't old Rod's got a lot to lose. Gonna get dishonorable discharges. Credit's gonna be no good at another school. Three years we spent here ain't gonna amount to a doggone thing. I know that, sir. That's why I thought we ought to have this little talk before anybody does anything. Hey, Roger, are you in here? Roger? Laurie? Over here. Look like this fellow. Simmons? Well, now, he's very handsome. And he's intelligent. And he's very cultured. Well, don't forget to meet him this time. Fair idea, leaving me sitting in that cafe <laughs> like a knot on a log. That sailor hadn't come along. I don't even know how I got home. Don't worry. Don't worry, honey. This time there's not going to be any interrupt. Jack, I want to speak to you. Later. Later. Get rid of this girl and come on with me. I want to talk to you about the last chapter. I'm not in the mood for, for literature tonight. Jack, all the last chapter's going to be gruesome. Fine. Fine, you just you just write it up. I'm sure it'll be fine. But I don't want to write that. It's not the ending I had in mind. Yeah, well, you just uh, use that style of yours. I'm sure it'll be fine. It's going to be midnight tonight, boy. Yeah, fine. I'll see you later, parent. Here we are, Angel Turkey. Looks funny. I feel like I've been here before. We were here yesterday, huh? Oh. Like the 
these old foreign countries and all this old sawdust and all this old hotly seasoned food. You noticed that cadet? Yes, I saw him. What do you make of him? His legs was too long. <laughs> I don't, I don't mean that, Rosebud. I mean the sign. It looks a little nicer here today. All cadets and none of them foreigners. Let's get out of here. But I haven't eaten yet. Come on. I haven't eaten yet. Well, I'm getting out of here. Excuse me, sir. But you weren't leaving, were you? Mr. Simmons upstairs, waiting to meet the girl according to your orders. Well, you, uh, you tell him to forget it. But, sir, there's someone else waiting to meet you. Who? Some cadet, sir. Would you like to come up? Why not? No reason at all, sir. See you later, Rosebud. Well, fellas, this looks like quite a party. Am I invited? You're the guest of honor. Sit down on that chair. The Paris, the men in this room and the men outside don't intend to let you get away with what you've done to Major Avery. Well, he hit me. And I must say, I, I used every bit of restraint, refraining from knocking his head off. Well, who do you think you are, the Ku Klux Klan? If I've done something wrong, Cordia, why haven't I been reported to a regular honor court? Because an honor court couldn't make you sign this statement. We can. <laughs> you guys really do think you're the Ku Klux Klan, don't you? Do you realize that what you're doing is completely illegal? Every one of you guys could be expelled for this? For what we're doing to you, we could get a lot worse. You certainly could. I've been abducted in a public restaurant. I think you're all out of your minds. All right, DeFaris, now you read this. And sign it. Read it. <laughs> this is crazy. I never did any of this. Who says I did this? Go ahead and sign to Paris. You're not fooling anybody in this room. I deny these charges, and I challenge you to prove them. Witnesses have testified against you. Now, you better sign while you're still able to. Yeah, well, let me see these witnesses. You'll bring them in. Let them say this to my face. All right, bring them in. men accuse me of this? That's right. You can question them if you want to. I hold is this true? Did you guys tell these stories about me? Yeah, John? Why, Harold, what for? I don't, don't, don't you remember the bull sessions, Harold? The good times? 
Zako, I still think you got quite a sense of humor. Boy, you're about the lowest down creature I've ever seen in my life. Okay, I'll tell the truth. We know the truth already, the Paris. You just sign this statement. Oh, I can't sign that statement. Because there's something in it that isn't true at all. Sure, Georgie was framed. But my hands are clean. Gat beat him up. Those freshmen poured whiskey in him. And Coble carried him down to the quadrangle. Well, why did all this happen in the first place? Uh, it, it was a, a practical joke that Gat and Coble and I were playing on Georgie. This was no practical joke. It was a deliberate, cold-blooded plan to ruin him and Major Avery. And you engineered it. No, that's not true at all, and that's why I can't sign that statement. Now, you guys are nuts. Now, who would believe all this bunk anyhow? How could I make Gat beat up Georgie? He's twice my size. And these freshmen, did I hold a pistol to their heads and make them do this? Did I? Go. Oh. oh, no, no, they're just as guilty as I am. Oh, I get it. I get it, Gorgeous. I get it. You're trying to get these boys off. They rat on me like a bunch of stinking cowards, and you're trying to get them off. You don't care anything about Major Avery at all. It's these guys you care about. Oh, clever, very clever. These men gave themselves up voluntarily, knowing they were ending their careers at this school. <laughs> don't make me laugh, Gorgia. All I want out of you is your signature on this statement right now. I'm not signing anything. You got one minute to sign. I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do, Coach. I'll make a... I'll make a deal with you. Fifty seconds. You, you let me go. I, I don't care about this school anyway. You let me go after I sign. I'll go tonight. I'll take a train. And you want to make a really good deal? 35 seconds. I'll scratch the names of these men off. Let them go. I don't care. I can see you're more sympathetic to them anyhow. And, and I must admit, they're really not to blame. 25 seconds. Now, you must admit, I'm, I, I'm being very truthful and honest, fellas. No, it's, it's not that I'm afraid. I mean, well, what can you do to me anyway except beat me up or something like that? Ten seconds. I'm not going to sign unless you promise to let me go. Five, four, three, two. Okay. Okay, I'll sign. You see, fellas, I'm scratching off their names. Don't scratch anything off. Just sign. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll sign. Now, fellas, I'll go with you to the colonel, and I'll take the blame for everything. Hamilton, Roger, let's get him out of here. Don't spill it. We made a deal. We made a deal. All right, let's go. Hey, put that jeep box on. Fellas. <laughs> You're just trying to scare me, is that it? Well, you, you wouldn't you wouldn't do anything to me, would you, fellas? 
You wouldn't beat up a helpless man. I can't believe college cadets would do a thing like that. You wouldn't dare. I see through a bunch of peasants like you. <laughs> You're just trying to make me crawl, is that it? That's it, isn't it? You want to make me crawl, huh? Listen to me. You're a bunch of stupid jerks. You're nothing. You're nothing. You're nothing. <laughs> You can't do anything to me anyhow. Nothing. You'll find out the man you're dealing with is a man named Jocko de Paris. You'll find out that my name is not Charles L. Chicken Feathers. My name is Jocko de Paris. That's right. And that name means guts and brains and willpower. I'll laugh at what you do to me. <laughs> Give me the blindfold. Harold. Leave me alone! Get out of the party. Get up here. Come against this tree. I'm hold him here. Blindfold. Here. Cordia. Cordia, you call you, you call this fair play. You call this fair play. You're all a bunch of morbid slobs! All right, hold up here. Yeah. All right, the Paris. Come on, this way. Where are we? Where are we? Uh, what are the tracks for? Come on, Paris. You wouldn't do anything foolish. Stand would you back, Mister. You'd all go to jail. Oh, You'd all go. To... Please, fellas, don't do anything to me. Harold, 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 I played fair, didn't I? Come on, to Paris. I did what you wanted me to, didn't I, Harold? Come on, on your feet, boy. Harold, didn't I? Come on, Paris. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Come on. Come on, Paris. On your feet. Let's go, boy. No, no, please, fellas, don't do anything. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. Jack on the palace! I'll get you guys! 